Hello. Welcome back to what's bubbling at Zimbibble. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at what is new in Zim NFT 01. Woohoo! So, this is the Zim site at zimjs.com, and we had launched Zim NFT 00 with information about how to use Zim to make NFTs, etc. And that was a whole launch on its own after Zim Cat, uh, which was after Zim 10, Zim Neo, Zim Oct, Zim Hep, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so under the news section here, news, we have a new mini site for Zim NFT, which is right here, and it's featuring these things. Boom, boom, boom. Woohoo! So these are called dialogues, so a new dialogue. They're currently stored in the game module, so they're often used as part of games. They work not only as um, speech bubbles like this, but they actually work as dialogue boxes as well. You don't need to put the little tails, they're called, on there. They could be down here with little arrows. The arrows can go inside, outside, and it just helps you advance dialogue. So there we go, like so. Uh, what we've done in this one is we've added a uh, indicator up top there that you can jump to as well. And that's not part of the dialogue, but it works. In the, it's wired to the dialogue. Very easy to do. Just one line of code. We'll wire that up. So let's read this. Welcome creators to Zim NFT01. Press the arrows above the logo. Ah, right. So this is a mini site, and you can go to more examples by pressing these arrows above the logo to see all the updates. We have a new dialog. We have uh, some emojis. And what we'll do is we'll do bubbling on most of these main ones, and then we'll probably have a bubbling at the end where we look at all of a, a mismatch. Mishmash, a mismatch, or a mishmash, one or the other. I did a mismatch of the word mishmash and miss whatever. Okay, on we go. So lots of emoji magic. That's kind of cool because we ended up sort of, uh, once we realized that emojis work pretty well, just as a, a text, just, they're just text basically. So in a label, we decided to bring them out and feature them a bit more. And so now we have some um, some treats with emojis as well. So customizable indicator icons. <laughs> Maybe emojis would be good for that. Hmm, I don't know. And a cam that captures motion. So this is our big announcement. We have a cam uh, library now, much like we have a game library uh, or help helper library, game, physics, uh, what else have we got? 3JS, the pizzazz libraries, and the socket library. Okay, so now there's a cam one as well. So that's uh, exciting. We'll definitely do a bubbling on that. Collapsible windows and panels and lists. Oh my! QR codes made easy. We've, um, you know, why reinvent the wheel? There's lots of JavaScript QR code libraries out there, but we just made sure that we had one and that we can use it really easily with a, a new QR in Zim. So I'll show you that. And there's an odds function. So instead of saying rand, well, we'll show you. <laughs> we'll show you that later in that hodgepodge of, of stuff at the end. Okay, uh, random can be seeded again with that one as well. Place registration points along the edges, much like we can sort of do pose along the edges of the the stage. A style once setting. Um, a direction, so for right to left and stuff, um, that works out a little bit. And a blend modes helper, and frame has focus and blur events. Docs have individual code pages. And we've uh, taken the tilt sensors, uh, which also include orientation, and put those in a doc section. Um, more Zim Shim templates and more crystals, yay! Plus a bunch of fixes. Enjoy the new Zim, woohoo! Okay, so our first thing that we're going to do here is actually look at the code for the dialogues. And so that's what this bubbling will be about. And then we'll probably do a bubblings on some of those other things at the beginning, and then one that captures all the ones at the end. Okay, let's take a look at some code now. 
I'm going to close that down. And here is the Zim uh, dialog. These are all found in the NFT directory of Zim in a thing called bubbling. It's a little bit awkward because we have a bunch of NFTs. So let's have a look over here. We have a bunch of NFTs already in our <laughs> NFT directory because we've been launching lots of NFTs. That's been uh, a lot of fun doing that. Wow, look at all those. Oh, maybe they're not all. Are they? Are they all really? Mid jiving jelly? It must stop at some point. Zinkle. No, it doesn't. Wow, all those NFTs. How about that? So anyway, we've thrown, um, but yet Zim NFT is a, you know, it's it's a version of Zim, much like Zim Cat was. We've got a whole bunch of stuff in the Zim Cat directory. So uh, anyway, whatever. We've made a little bubbling directory and all these examples that we'll be looking through in our bubblings are in there. Isn't that nice? And those are where all those arrows point to. So here it is. We're bringing in, sorry about the syntax coloring with Adam. It's just like, come on, Adam, just because it's an absolute URL doesn't mean you have to gray it out. If we do any other kind of URL, it's like nice and bright. But as soon as we turn it into an absolute URL, it's like the darkest of grays, even on the selection. Anyway, we're bringing in a Zim game crystal there. So uh, this is our one link now to the crystals. And we need the game so that we can get dialogue. That's, uh, there's a, a poll right now going on in the Zim Slack forum. You're welcome to go in and vote for whether you want that in the main Zim library. Uh, we kind of think that it, it suits games well. It's a fair bit of code. It's a compilation of a bunch of different things. And so we just thought we'd put it in game. Uh, bolster game up a little bit, you know? <laughs> Why not, huh? So that's where it is. And there's information about that. You must import the game 2.6 module or later or use the, the game crystal here. And we have um, docs on dialogue. So the docs for the game module are, are right in, in dialogue. Do you want to take a peek at that? Do I don't have a browser? Mm, OK, I will open this up in a browser Boop, like that. And here she comes. No, no um, pragma here. Do you see that? That's because I didn't open up Google from my desktop. I may as well open up. That was the very, I had no browser open. That was the first time I opened it. I have on my desktop on Chrome here, a little shortcut thing. If you're new to Zim, I may as well show you just quickly since we're talking about it. There's my shortcut that says, allow file access from files. It's a security error that doesn't allow pictures to be <laughs> loaded immediately. Into, blah, 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 blah. But if you if you add that to your Chrome, then um, now if I open this up like this, open in browser, bump, uh, in comes Pragma. Yay. Usually I have browsers open, so I didn't realize I closed my only browser. <laughs> Uh, or, as I often do when I'm teaching and so forth, is I will open up here, open in Browser Plus, and Browser Plus doesn't have that concern. That allows me to see both things. Actually, this is not a bad idea. May as well keep that open there. So there are the dialogues, and we're loading Pragman as an asset. So that issue is when you're loading sounds or images you uh, it's fine online don't worry about it online that's okay it's just when you're looking at them locally all canvas libraries have that um, security sort of issue i guess we could call it so we're bringing in the words so once our frame is complete we're storing our words that we want to put in the dialog box and by the way dialog boxes work just fine with only one thing to say so a uh, speech bubble often just has one thing to say. We've added the little arrows and the arrows can go inside or outside. Uh, there we have an example of one inside. This one doesn't have any stems. A uh, stem on the poly uh, is a little bit awkward. <laughs> you got another stem coming out. Note there's different types of stems. Okay, and those will be parameters of the dialogue. And we can also aim them in different directions. They can be put at any corner or any side. So that was a little bit annoying, <laughs> to say the least. Okay, so you don't need a, a big long list. You could do it with just one word if you wanted to. We're making a container, it looks like, and we're animating in that container. That's why all these dialogues sort of spin in. You want to see that again? So they're in a container, and we spin them all in, 
And here we are. How exciting. Oh my goodness. So we've got a line height styling going on overall. Of course, style works on the dialog boxes. And here's a new dialog right here where we're passing in. It could be just one word. So if we change that to ho, oh, like that, oh, with a string, of course, quote ho. Oh. And uh, now when we refresh this, it says ho right there. Oopsies. Yeah. Like as in ho, ho, ho. <laughs> uh, but anyway, or we're passing in all of the words, an array. And then if we do an array, it will do them in order. The dialog type of that is a rectangle, but it's got quite the corner on it. So there's a corner of 100, and that forms sort of this elongate, classical-looking speech bubble type thing. So the height of it is... I don't know, do we have a height? Somewhere there must be a height. Maybe it's using default height. Uh, looks like it. I think one of them we just went in, and even if some were default, we just threw everything in this second one right here. So this second one was a test one where we just threw in all of the different uh, parameters, and then we started playing around with them, and eventually this is what we came up with, and we didn't use certain ones, but we left them in there just so you could see the parameters more easily in the example. And I guess it's got a default height of 200. So if no height is coming out and we've got a corner of 100, if it had a default height of 200, that's what causes this to be rounded on the edge, like any of our rectangles. Um, this one has a line for the tail type. And it's not automatically filling. So we've set a size of a font. So we've got two choices. The default is to actually fill true. This one over here is filling. So you see how th that text is smaller because this is how it manages to fill it in this rectangle. Uh, we've got padding as well. Uh, here, this is a padding of 50. Anyway, pad padding as well is in there. That can be a little bit awkward at times. It, I mean, for the most part, it works. It, it'll be up to you whether you want to keep the same exact font size, um, at which point you have to be careful that you, all of your statements or whatever you want to call them uh, fit within the area. You know, it's close sometimes and, uh, and everything's not totally perfect. <laughs> so, ah, right, there's an example of not totally perfect. The word blend modes doesn't quite fit. It looks like on this one we are doing fit, but we've got the arrows on the inside. Could have put the arrows on the outside on this one, but we just thought that they look pretty nice there. And for the most part, it fits. There, I saw another one that had a little bit. You might want to reduce the padding on that or change the word or, you know, whatever. So it does take, um, uh, it does take a little bit of fiddling about with the padding. Um, okay, so you use the fit, use a fill, sorry, fill true, and then use the padding on there probably works. Uh, we got a font. It's got, it is a label on the inside. So as you can see here, we've provided some things about the label, the color, alignment kind of, I'm not sure what else, shift vertical, shift horizontal are also done through traditionally through labels as well, so that you can make something move a little bit one way or the other if the font isn't quite right for you. Different fonts uh, align slightly differently vertically and nothing we can do about it it's just the, it's just the canvas and the font and the font base sizes and stuff like that um, so we provided in labels any label type thing a shift horizontal shift vertical the slants are all about uh, there's a, a version called slant and that's actually the default which is not the rectangle but rather we thought we'd do something a little different with zim um, which we do sometimes when we have default values Instead of doing a very round speech bubble or, uh, or the traditional kind of elongate speech bubble, we did this slant one. So that's your default, that's close to your default there. And then the slant values, as a matter of fact, since this is the second one we're looking at, this is the slant version right here, uh, we're using default slants. So uh, if we made our left at zero, refresh here, then we have zero slant on this left. And this really just sort of equates to the angle. Uh, if you're going across the top, zero is zero. 
Um, you just have to figure out which way negative and positive is going. I think positive, that, that would be a positive slant. This last one that's cutting in, I think clockwise is always considered positive. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, you just throw in a negative number, and if that doesn't <laughs> work for you, you know, so, okay, how about how about this one and going across the top? What did we get? Well, let's do the bottom one, right, right across the bottom. So that slant bottom, we'll say uh, zero on the bottom, and let's see what happens. There it is. We don't always have to animate this in if we're going to play with it a little bit. Just a second. Comment out the scale. We'll leave the scale at 1. Presumably that's right. Oh, maybe not. It would be more like a scale of 0 0.8. 0 0.8. We'll keep it within here. One, when we were testing this initially, we didn't have the banner, and we had it nicely scaled at 1 fitting. Then when we brought the banner, <laughs> we had to reduce the scale a little bit. So there she be. There's flat across the bottom. And I think doing a positive angle will probably open that up. Let's go try it. So slant. There it is. Horizontal slant bottom. Instead of zero, if we said uh, 30, like that. That's quite the slant. There it is. Not bad, huh? It's almost like a megaphone thing. So that's a, a slant of 30, which means the top is probably slanting uh, a negative amount. So if we go to the slant top, if we slant the top 30, then it would probably slant the same way, I think. Yeah, there it goes. And we're off now with, with this thing right here. It's, it's um, having a problem. But anyway, there's a slant going down. And what else? Uh, we don't want that though. So we, if we slant it in a negative, you, you'd end up with this more of a slant going up. Okay, we had nulls. We had the default for the slant going in there. Null. And that gives you a bit of an expression, an expressive dialog box. I'm not sure what's cutting off that. Uh, oh, maybe once we finished animating, we, un we cached it when we animated. That's what's happened. We've cached this container when we animated it. And this thing must be popping out of the container. And when we finish animating, we're uncaching. Uh, that's a trick. There's a lot of text in here. It can slow down the animation on mobile, for instance, uh, with a lot of vectors and text. So as it's caching, you can't really tell that it's cached. You can tell, I don't know, can you tell that this is cached now? It actually looks pretty good, even though it is cached. But it will look crisper if it's... Um, if it uh, is, isn't cached. So we'll bring this back again. That's what's causing that little cutoff to be there. Anyway, this will look now crisper than it did before when it was when it was cached. Uh, and you see what's happened is once we finish animating, we uncache it. That's all. I suppose I could have just, where did we cache this in the first place? I'm not sure. Oh, a of course, after we added the stuff to it, because we're animating the whole container, we need to add the things to the container, and then we cache it right there at the end. Not really to do with di dialogues. That's just uh, Zim stuff uh, optimization. Okay, so what else do we have about dialogues? Well, so we talked a bit about the fonts, colors, background colors, border colors, alignment, great. We do anything with alignment, we're center aligning usually. But if you had a dialog box that was just a big rectangle, that would be like the rectangle one, sometimes those are left aligned, where you read from the left rather than center aligned. Because remember, this can be used for a game where you've got a box down here where the characters are saying something, you got some arrows, and then, then it goes away. Um, there was a request to make this so that you could swipe it. At the moment, it's not swipeable. I think that's a great idea. You can swipe it by adding a swiper to the dialog box. Uh, or maybe, well, you can do it with a swiper. That's usually for, well, continued swiping would work, but um, just the swipe, a new swipe object on, on there, and passing that in is the target. And then, uh, I'm not sure, I think you could just activate the arrows with a method. There is a method. We did some methods here, timeout, 
like timeout, dialog.selectedIndex is one. So after two seconds, watch what happens here. It comes in, whoosh. There, that one just popped to, and so we've got welcome creators to Zim NFT01. Started there, and then after two seconds, it went boop to that next one using the selected index. All right, what else have we done that's kind of like that? Here we are wiring on this second one. We're wiring this dialog right here. Uh, dialog, so this is this blue one here. We're wiring the dialog. We're on the indicator right here. So it's basically indicator dot wire to the dialog. Uh, I can't remember what that is, but this one is both ways. Okay, so that means if I change this, the dialog box will change. And if I change the dialog box, the indicator will change. Change. Isn't that amazing? So that is making these two things wire together. And there you go. Cool, huh? This is probably the property. And since the, the default property is a selected index, that's why we didn't have to say anything there. No, makes sense. We popped in and out of line height, I think. I don't know. I can't remember what we were doing with that. We turned off the style there and used the or used the basic line height for, for this one. But we found with the Comic Sans, the line height, it was bumping together too much. Remember? Ah, fine problems. So there we wanted a bigger line height, and we put it there. And we went back to the line height with the style here, it looks like. Um, one thing we could do, remember, is you can turn off and on styles and remember them. So that's to do with styles. So I could have uh, remembered this style and turned it off. And then here, remembered it. <laughs> how, how, how do I turn that? <laughs> we remembered it in both places. Uh, recorded it up here and then remembered it. And remembered it and I can't remember the, the word we use for that. Uh, and I don't have a browser open. I closed my browser again. Can you believe that? What am I doing closing my browsers? When do you guys ever close your browser? Gee whiz. Uh, so here's the docs. Let's just quickly check on that in style. Sorry, this is a bubbling, not an explore. In explore, I do, do this kind of stuff all the time. But uh, let's just have a look here. Recall. There we go. Okay. So bring back a remembered style. Recall. And then remember. So here you, we would remember. We add some types. We recall something something that we remembered and and so forth so remember and recall are the two words there and i won't close the browser how about that so anything else left in the dial oh yeah the tail where to put the tail so by default i think the tail is this one right here pointing to the left it just seems most natural you have a character and there's the speech bubble but you can make the tail as, as we had to do here we made all the tails go in every di you know different direction. So tail horizontal is where horizontally you want it to point, and tail vertically is where vertically you want it to point. So what the heck is that one doing? Uh, that, oh, that was the top. That was the right top. Okay, that's a corner. But what if it's on an edge? What do we do to make it on an edge? Well, let's have a look at the. Oh, probably center. I would imagine. So what have we? Where do we do those? No, because that's tail vertical. Where do we do some tail verticaling? Tail horizontal, right? Yeah. Okay, so tail horizontal center would be in the center. Let's check it out. I don't know which one this is. Center. And we'll refresh here. Oh, yeah, here it is. So there it is, centered, although it looks slightly not centered. It's interesting. Uh, wonder if it relates to the scale of something. Let's try it with a different one. Do we even have it with a different one? That's an indicator. Tail, horizontal, center, whichever this one is. See how that one's doing. Yeah, that definitely looks like a good center. So this is a speech bubble. Probably should come right off the top of that. That might be a bit of a bug. So do you know how we deal with bugs? We go into this guy, into Slack here. Whoosh. We open up bugs and we say, check. T 
tail, um, what is that called again? A line, horizontal align. Tail, uh, not shift. Wait a minute. Do we do we do anything with the shift horizontal? So you could, you could shift that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So when we did it to the right, it required a shift to aim it properly, and we put a shift horizontal of 25. So that's why it's moved over 25. Maybe you guys caught that. And I just about missed it. <laughs> I just about <laughs> recorded a bug for that. It's like there we go. Okay, perfect. Right in the center. Yep. Nice, huh? Glad we, glad we caught that. So yeah, it, you may need to shift something around so that it's pointing to the right place. So we've added a tail shift horizontal and a tail shift vertical there. Um, all right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna be undoing all this stuff. How far do we undo to? Slant tops. Oh no! I just undo right to the beginning. There we go. We undid. So we talked about the tail. And then finally, the arrows, where you can choose to put the arrows inside or arrows flip. Now, why do we do that? Oh, yeah, so that left to right, you can you can make this one sort of go from the front to the back, if, if, if that's the way you go. <laughs> all right. Good. And we're just putting all those things into the dialog container. And there we have it. I mean, pretty cool, huh? So you can play around with that. And once again, it's in the game module. So we've got the game <coughs> game being called there in the crystal. Why don't we just pop out and take a look at that crystal location. The crystal location top. When you go to code right here, you can copy your code. There's there. There's the uh, the normal NFT of Zim. But a little bit farther on down here is the CDN right here. Click the CDN. And that's where you go in and find the crystals. You can read about the crystals here. Here are the crystals. There's the game crystal. So that's what you're needing to call that. And if you want to call that, then you go back to the code here and go to the CDN. And the crystal for game is right here. Okay, you are all for that. And all that's doing inside the crystal is calling createjs zim nft01 and the new game module right there, 2.6. Uh, this, by the way, is popping up a warning in Chrome, uh, apparently, sometimes. Um, you know, I don't know, it's like very annoying. They're saying this might slow down something in the future. <laughs> it's like, well, for crying out loud, Chrome, just go away with these bloody, bloody messages. Have you ever, see, you ever seen Google site? You go to Google site and look in the console and it's got all the Chrome warnings in there. They must, they must be, you know, like, I wish there were a way in our code. We could just say, shut off all of the Chrome's little warning messages. Arr! There, how's that for a happy bubbling? <laughs> Anyway, uh, hopefully you're doing well out there, and you're welcome to join us at uh, zimjazz.com and uh, slash slack or zimjazz.com slash discord. We'd love to hear from you, and take it easy. I look forward to doing the rest of the bubblings uh, right now. Cheers. <laughs>